Former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson is spending the night in prison while his lawyers prepare an appeal. The lawyers ask for a hearing today to request that Tyson be released during the process. Tyson was sentenced yesterday for the rape of a beauty pageant contestant in July. Jeff Block has more. Former world champion Mike Tyson is now inmate Mike Tyson. He was handcuffed, fingerprinted, frisked. And if he was afraid, he didn't show it, even joking with the guards. Tyson seemed resigned to his fate, even if his supporters weren't. Passion on the street. Protesters marching and chanting outside the Marion County, Indiana courthouse. Tyson backers fearing the worst and blaming Tyson's accuser. She raped Mike! She raped Mike! Tyson entered the courthouse to be sentenced on his rape conviction, carrying a speech that showed little remorse. Tyson told Judge Patricia Gifford he didn't rape anyone. He didn't attempt to rape anyone. I'm sorry, he said. I agree I've done something, but I didn't mean to. Disappointed is how rape victim Desiree Washington is said to have reacted to Tyson's refusal to admit his guilt. Satisfied is how prosecutors reacted to the 10-year sentence, even though four years were suspended, and Tyson could do as little as three with good behavior. She didn't throw the, throw the keys at him and say, have a nice day. He's, he's facing a long prison sentence, and even three doesn't sound like a lot, so you got to go do the three. But I'm told once you're on the inside, it can be pretty long. Tyson is now on the inside, but not for long, he hopes. New lawyer Alan Dershowitz burst out of the courtroom after the verdict, bound for the appeals court for round one of his efforts to get Tyson free. The appeals court rejected an emergency petition for bond filed by Dershowitz. It will hear formal arguments Friday afternoon. Alan Dershowitz will also handle the formal appeal of Mike Tyson's rape conviction. This is as strong an appeal as I have ever argued. The issues in this case are as strong and as compelling as in any case I've ever argued. But for now, Mike Tyson, so often in the company of an entourage, is more alone than he's been in a long time. No longer with him the now subdued promoter Don King, or his obviously distraught surrogate mother, Camille Ewald or his high-powered and high-priced lawyers. Mike Tyson, once on top of the world, reduced to inmate number 922-335. I'm Jeff Locke, CNN, Indianapolis. Coming up on SportsCenter, day one behind bars as lawyers work to free Mike Tyson and the Davis Cup in a couple of minutes. But first, Mike Tyson from number one in the world to number 922335 in the Indiana State Penitentiary. The question today, would he stay locked up for long, though? Could his attorneys get him out of jail while uh, his appeal is being heard? When would it happen? How long would he be out? Yesterday, Mike Tyson received his 10-year sentence, six in prison, a minimum of three with time off for good behavior. Today, Tyson's attorneys were at work arguing that he should be allowed to leave prison while his appeal is being heard. Charlie Steiner was in Indianapolis for a day in court and at press conferences. Tyson spent most of his first full day in prison in a cell like this, alone. While his new defense attorney, Alan Dershowitz, was asking a three-judge panel in the Indiana Court of Appeals to release the former heavyweight champion on bail. Dershowitz told the court Tyson could not and would not flee the country while out on bail. Dershowitz said, Mr. Tyson expected a longer sentence than he got. If he was going to leave, he would have already left. Tyson is the most famous and most notorious convicted rapist in the world. He wears a scarlet letter. David Dreyer, the deputy prosecutor from Marion County, told the judges, this is probably the most unique defendant in Indiana history. He has the means and the necessity to leave. After 45 minutes of deliberations, the judges asked for certified transcripts of testimony from Mike Tyson and Desiree Washington, as well as transcripts of the hearing involving those three mystery defense witnesses who were not allowed to testify during the trial, as well as Judge Gifford's final instructions to the jury before the three justices could make a decision on whether to grant Tyson bail or not. As a result, Tyson will spend at least this weekend in prison pending the appeals court decision. The uh, court has requested certified copies of, the, uh, uh, of certain parts of the record. The uh, uh, 
Under the law, it's very clear that the court reporter and the judge have to transcribe them and certify them. Obviously, they want to look at the questions very carefully because they have questions about what exactly happened at the trial. We're wearing suits and ties. We're going home to our families tonight, and we're talking about a man who is not going home tonight. Justice delayed is justice denied. And what we find here uh, is a procrastination and an assembling of facts that have been lies, and it's something in the universe that justifies Carlisle saying, no lie can live forever. Meanwhile, Judge Gifford held a news conference of her own, and while she refused to talk specifically about the Tyson case, she did talk about what may have been at the heart of this story. To imply that a date rape is something any different than any rape, uh, to me, is to imply that it is um, a certain degree of okayness about it. And I think that's something that perhaps even women uh, have taken up as somewhat of a banner, saying uh, that it was a date rape. Tyson awakened Friday morning at 5.30 Eastern Time at the reception and diagnostic center. He met his 87 fellow inmates at breakfast a half hour later. Later in the day, Tyson received a physical exam, but for the most part, he spent the day behind bars in his prison cell. Prison officials have described him as quiet, cooperative, and low-key. So Mike Tyson will spend at least this weekend in prison, behind bars, or until a three-judge appellate panel allows him out on bail. I'm Charlie Steiner, ESPN, outside the appellate court in Indianapolis. No word on when an Indiana appeals court will decide whether boxer Mike Tyson remains in prison while his sentence and rape conviction are appealed. Today, Tyson's lawyer argued he isn't a flight risk, as the judge said he was yesterday when she sentenced him to 10 years in prison, with four of those years suspended. Alan Dershowitz, who now represents Tyson, says if Tyson did flee, he would resign as his lawyer. Number 922335. That's former boxing champ Mike Tyson's new title. But Tyson's lawyer wants the Indiana Appeals Court to free the prize fighter on bond while his rape conviction is appealed. The court will review documents from the case. That process is expected to take days. Tyson's trial judge revoked bond when she sentenced him yesterday, saying he could flee or harm others. Hi, how are you? The Tyson team, with its new leader, Alan Dershowitz, walked into court Friday afternoon to try and get their man out of prison. We're wearing suits and ties. We're going home to our families tonight, and we're talking about a man who is not going home tonight. But he may be closer to going free on bond than he was. The Second Circuit Court of Appeals in Indiana asked for certified copies of parts of the record of Mike Tyson's rape trial. That to better consider Mr. Dershowitz's arguments that Tyson be free while he appeals. Dershowitz says the trial judge, Patricia Gifford, erred on two main points. One, refusing to allow the testimony of three witnesses who allegedly saw Tyson and Desiree Washington passionately kissing and, quote, all over each other in a limousine outside the Canterbury Hotel before they went upstairs last July. And two, that the judge should have allowed what's called a mistake of fact instruction to the jury. That is, that if jurors believe that Tyson thought Ms. Washington consented to sex, even though she may not have, they could acquit him. Tyson promoter Don King says those two issues and others prove that Tyson did not get a fair trial. Now, I categorically witnessed by my eyes, in my humble opinion, feel that this was a racist trial that was set up that is a terrible injustice to Mike Tyson. Dershowitz says if Tyson is given bond, he would agree to be placed under house arrest and would even agree never to be alone in the company of a woman. Dershowitz says if Tyson breaks his bond, Dershowitz would immediately drop the case and that Tyson would agree to drop his appeal and serve his sentence. Mr. Tyson won't flee and won't violate any conditions. Some lawyers say asking to see transcripts of portions of the trial indicate that the judges are seriously considering the arguments for bond. But it figures to take several days before they even get the transcripts and then longer to make a ruling. In the meantime, Mike Tyson remains in prison. I'm Jeff Flock, CNN, Indianapolis. Now, here's what's happening with Mike Tyson. The former heavyweight champ doing six years hard time on a rape conviction is still behind bars as his attorneys are trying to get him out while the appellate process takes place. The Indiana Court of Appeals judges have the trial uh, transcripts and a decision on Tyson's temporary extrication could come within a matter of days. Now, what if Tyson 
Well, he has not taken, we understand, solid food since going in. He says he's trying to lose a little weight. He has also refused to be tested for academic achievement and is being written up for signing autographs for fellow prisoners, about 20 of them. The rules say no guest of the institution is to give anything of value to any other inmate. And those... Autographs, I guess, are going to be valuable. I wouldn't exactly call him a guest, though, well, at this point. <laughs> I'm not trying to make light of it, really, but... Not at all. You know, no. hey. A three-judge Indiana Court of Appeals has received the transcripts from the Mike Tyson raid trial. They will go over the information before deciding on whether Tyson will go free on bail while his conviction is being appealed. Meanwhile, the former champ spent his fourth day behind bars. He refused to take an educational achievement test today, which could lengthen his stay at the diagnostic center. The prison says he is also facing a disciplinary hearing on Tuesday because he was giving out his autograph, which is apparently against policy. A ruling on Tyson. Tonight on Sports Center, the decision on an appeal bond for the former champion. And a pleasant good evening. Welcome to Sports Center, along with Charlie Steiner. I'm Bob Lee. Mike Tyson's first days as a guest of the state of Indiana have been spent under a microscope, and late this afternoon, Tyson's bid to remain free while appealing his conviction came to a head. Indeed, Bob, it looks like Mike Tyson's going to spend a lot more days in Indiana. In fact, the bad news for Tyson continues to rain in on the former heavyweight champion. About two and a half hours ago, the Indiana Court of Appeals issued this terse order. The petition for bail pending appeal heretofore filed in this court by the appellant Michael G. Tyson is denied. And with that, Tyson will now likely remain in prison for the length of his sentence or until such time that an appeal might overturn the original conviction. Tyson's new defense team, headed up by Alan Dershowitz, might try to appeal to the state Supreme Court, but there is little precedent for that in Indiana. A little while ago, we spoke with Indianapolis attorney Mark Shaw about the Court of Appeals decision to keep Tyson in prison. Well, I wasn't surprised at all. I thought the appellate court would back up Judge Gifford. Uh, judge Sue Shields, a very good friend of Judge Gifford, the trial judge, and I thought that they wouldn't stab her in the back. I think the only surprise, frankly, is that Alan Dershowitz thought he had a chance. What about Mike Tyson giving out those autographs at the reception and diagnostic center? You suppose that may have played a role at all in any of this? Well, it was obviously bad timing. There are small things that he did, and in the big picture, that won't make much difference, but they couldn't have come at a worse time. If the appellate court thought uh, that there was a chance they were going to let Mike Tyson out, uh, his behavior closed that door. Can Tyson and Dershowitz go someplace else for bail now? Uh, very unlikely. I think they will concentrate now on going forward with the uh, appeal. Uh, they will uh, file a motion to correct errors with the trial court. That will be overruled. They'll get ready now for the appellate court. Uh, the whole appeal process, Charlie, probably will take about a year. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Meanwhile, Tyson received a reprimand from Indiana correction officials today because of the autographs he was handing out to fellow inmates yesterday, which is against prison policy. Tyson said today he wouldn't do it again. There was no further discipline directed at the former heavyweight champion. And Don King is still in Indianapolis, and he charged today that Tyson's life is in danger as long as he remains in an Indiana state prison. Well, I fear for Mike Tyson's life. Uh, this is the kind of game that's being played that when they set up a guy, they either keep him in jail the rest of his life or they kill him. I've been to the penitentiary. I know the game very well. I'm very familiar with it. A black life in Indiana is not worth very much. In fact, it's worthless. And all the people of goodwill, white and black alike, should be outraged at the gross injustice that took place here in Marion County. There has been no comment from Tyson's legal counsel, Alan Dershowitz, on either King's allegations or the Court of Appeals' decision to deny Tyson's bail request today. Bob? Bad news for Mike Tyson. The Indiana Court of Appeals has denied his request to be released on bail while his case is being appealed. A three-judge panel rejected his release without comment. Mike Tyson will remain in prison while he appeals his convictions for rape and criminal deviant conduct. Today, the Indiana Court of Appeals rejected the former boxing champion's request to be freed on bail. The court didn't explain. Tyson's attorneys are expected to appeal the decision to Indiana's Supreme Court. At about 8.30 central time this morning, Mike Tyson was moved to the prison where he is expected to serve out the remainder of his six-year sentence. Today is the 21st day behind bars. He walked through a tunnel from the reception and diagnostic center in Plainfield, Indiana, to a place euphemistically known as the Indiana Youth Center. This is now Mike Tyson's home for the foreseeable future. It is considered a high-medium-security facility. 
inmates, or offenders, as they are known, are allowed to walk around the grounds as long as they have passes. More than half of the 1,400 offenders take part in the educational program here. Our primary focus is on high school education and getting men to complete their high school education. The high school program is one of the primary reasons Tyson was transferred here. Tyson will also have to go through a program called Life Skills. Philip Slavens is the assistant superintendent of the Indiana Youth Center. Help him with identification of the problem, uh, trying to avoid the problem in the future, uh, being able to deal with himself as well as others when he is uh, released. Tyson is expected to spend his first week in a dormitory like this one, but he may eventually end up living here in one of these 44 double deck bunks. Each offender has a, a locker that they can keep commissary and valuable things in. They're responsible for everything in their locker. They're responsible for their immediate bed area as far as keeping it dusty, keeping it clean, keeping their bed made. Uh, personal hygiene is a mess. There is no boxing allowed inside the Indiana prison system, so Tyson's physical activity will be limited to shooting baskets, lifting weights, and running. For fun, Tyson could shoot pool on these well-worn tables or involve himself in arts and crafts. In this room, Tyson, like all other offenders at the Indiana Youth Center, will be allowed a total of 10 hours of visitation per month. No one visitor is allowed more than two visits per month. The telephone is the only other communication to the outside world. All calls are collected. While Tyson and the other offenders are given some latitude inside the walls of the Indiana Youth Center, there are constant reminders everywhere he and they are in prison. And Assistant Superintendent Phil Slavin says he does not expect any problems from any of the other offenders attempting to challenge Tyson. Said Slavin's quote, they have enough problems of their own to be worrying about his problems. Hmm. Was Tyson provoked? More trouble in prison for the ex-champ while his money makes more news on the outside. Tyson, he is in an isolation cell this evening awaiting a disciplinary hearing at the Indiana prison where he is serving his six-year rape sentence. Prison officials say that Tyson last night twice threatened prison personnel. First a guard outside a visiting room and two hours later a security supervisor. Tyson's hearing will be within five days. He could be given extra work or lose privileges or possibly lose his one-to-one -one day good time credit for time served. Alan Dershowitz is representing Tyson in his appeal, and he says Tyson spoke last week of being fearful of being provoked into a, con a confrontation. Tyson's money problems continue to make headlines. New York Newsday reporting that the former champion paid for his legal defense by withdrawing half of a $2 million annuity that was originally designed to support him for life. Tyson's former manager, Bill Caton, said the annuity established five years ago would have paid Tyson a quarter million dollars a year beginning in 1994. And according to one witness in the Caton versus Tyson court case, Tyson currently has, quote, no liquid assets. Mike Tyson's been charged with threatening a prison official who's been isolated in a single cell following the incident. The Indiana Youth Center says Tyson will have a disciplinary hearing later this week. Tyson's serving a six-year rape sentence. Former heavyweight boxing champion Mike Tyson is currently serving his time in an isolated Indiana prison cell that after being charged with threatening prison workers. But Tyson's attorney, Alan Dershowitz, who is working on an appeal of Tyson's six-year conviction on rape charges, is now saying that Tyson was and is uh, deliberately uh, being provoked, like poking a stick at a caged animal and expecting the animal not to react. The Tyson camp fears these tactics are geared at sabotaging the appeal effort, but promoter Don King says a lot more than appeal could be on the line here. I'm fearful of Mike Tyson's life. I've been to the penitentiary and all the indicators show that uh, Mike Tyson is a person that they are trying to provoke in order to make him do things that will uh, make him seem like he's incorrigible and that uh, he should not be on the street so they will be able to beat him and eventually kill him or both. By the way, Mr. King is denying allegations he skimmed millions away from Mike Tyson's earnings in the ring, as alleged by King's former controller. King says the guy was a disgruntled, a disgruntled chap and that he is thinking of filing ethics charges against him in New York. Uh, a different kind of uh, inactivity for Mike Tyson, obviously. He is in jail. 
and for apparently the first time, somebody has talked to him. Yes, yesterday Mike Tyson granted an interview to Ed Bradley of uh, 60 Minutes fame. This is for a uh, CBS show called Street Stories. They sat and spoke for over an hour yesterday in the Indiana Youth Center, and uh, it'll be interesting to hear what Mike Tyson has to say in his first jailhouse interview. Yeah, a lot of people will be tuned into that, and uh, apparently among the many things he did was defend uh, Don King against the allegations that he misappropriated his money. For the words of former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson. In his first interview since he began serving his six-year rape sentence, he's told CBS television that, quote, I know my body is here, but my mind is not, and that's how I'm surviving. Tyson says he's been heckled by other inmates in the Indiana prison, that he knows he's not a popular inmate because he stands on his principles. Welcome back. Former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson, of course, is no longer making millions in the boxing ring, but that doesn't mean he isn't making news. He did last night simply by talking. His first interview since he began serving his six-year rape sentence. On the CBS program Street Stories, among other things, Tyson discussed his first impressions of prison life, his opinion of the prosecutor who put him there, his future in the sport, and his future period. After being in my cell, I mean, for a couple of days, though, I used to say, you know, I mean, cells are horrible. You just, you'll never forget them, you know what I mean, as long as you live. You know, they let, they, prison itself will always leave, you know what I mean, everlasting effect on me. You know what I mean, you, you just never forget it. The prosecutor, I thought he was um, a racist, weak, um, publicity happy little weak man then it's normal and that's why i'm in trouble because i'm normal and slightly arrogant you know i get a little arrogant because i'm confident you know i know whatever i do i know i'm the best at you know and people get upset with that but you know I mean? that's a part of me which people a lot of people don't like a lot of people don't like themselves and i happen to be totally in love with myself i might not even want to box i've been i've been bored with boxing for four years already i might not even want to fight anymore once i get out you think about that no, I never think about fighting. Never. I'm not dead. You know what I mean? As long as I'm breathing, my brain is functioning, my heart is functioning, I prevail. Now, at his request, Tyson spent a few hours in a segregation cell, fearful of reprisal for uh, what he said about uh, fellow inmates and guards criticizing them, but there were no incidents reported. Sports Center, civil unrest for the former champion. More trials and tribulations for Mike Tyson. We will explain when Sports Center returns. Desiree Washington, the woman Mike Tyson was convicted of raping, has filed a civil lawsuit against him. Washington's lawyer says the suit was filed because of Tyson's glib attitude and lack of remorse since Tyson has maintained his innocence. You'll recall in her first interview after Tyson was convicted, Washington told ABC's Barbara Walters that she would have never brought Tyson to trial if he had shown the slightest bit of remorse. I can only pity this man because he's sick. And if he had come to me any time before or, or gone to his lawyers or, or to anyone and said, I was wrong. You know, the first step to any recovery is admitting that you have the problem. I admit that I have a problem and I need help. Get me some help. I wouldn't have gone through this trial. She's obviously gotten competent counsel. She's had an opportunity to, to work it over with them. And, and they've decided that it's appropriate that they get some compensation. And I think, great, more power to her. Tyson's attorney, Alan Dershowitz, says he couldn't be happier about Washington's filing suit because, in his words, it shows what she really is, a money-grubbing phony, end quote. Ahead, but before we get to the action, Ferdy, we have some important news from the world of boxing. Well, the world of boxing is abuzz with the developments in the never-ending saga of Mike Tyson. And to help shed some light on this major development, we welcome live via satellite from Charleston, South Carolina, famed Harvard Law professor Alan Dershowitz, who is Mike Tyson's legal counsel, handling his appeal of a rape conviction. And first of all, Alan, could you tell us exactly what happened? Well, the Rhode Island Supreme Court, the highest court in the state, yesterday issued a remarkable ruling in which they said that Desiree Washington and her, and her parents may very well have committed perjury in order to cover up her true financial motivation in charging that Mike Tyson had raped her. And they also concluded that it was wrong not to have brought this fact to the attention of the jury, because if the jury had known about this fact, they might very well have come to a different verdict. Juries don't believe liars and perjurers who have financial motivations for making up stories. 
Well, those are strong words, Alan. And, uh, you know, we've been unsuccessful in our attempts to reach Greg Garrison and Jeffrey Modisette of the Marion County Prosecuting Attorney's Office. However, we have received this statement from that office, which says the Marion County Prosecutor's Office has no knowledge of the provisions of any agreement between Mrs. Miss Washington and any attorney, since such an agreement would be confidential. Well, that's total In nonsense. addition, any decision regarding the preclusion of her former civil attorneys during part of the criminal trial was made solely by the Washington family, not by the prosecutor's office. And finally, this office is not aware of any facts that would contradict any testimony of Desiree Washington. And that seems to be saying something opposite of what you're saying, Alan. What do you make of that? Well, they're saying something opposite of what the Rhode Island court concluded after evaluating all of the evidence. This nonsense about it being confidential is just ridiculous when you think about it. When you have a prosecuting witness in a case, the prosecutor has an obligation to learn the truth from the witness. If the witness said something's confidential, you say to the witness, hey, it doesn't matter, tell us. What is the truth here? This isn't a game. This is a search for truth. The prosecutor had an obligation to find out whether there was a contingency fee agreement we think we can prove the prosecutor knew or should have known. If they didn't know, they willfully blinded themselves. They purposely didn't ask the question. Because if they knew that by asking the question, they would have blown their case out of the water. They followed the William Kennedy Smith case. And they knew that in the William Kennedy Smith case, the prosecuting witness came into court with a lawyer by her side, and she had made plans to file a civil suit. When the jury learned about that, they didn't believe her. The prosecutor in this case knew the same thing would happen. This is a very strongly smoking gun. And the fingerprints of the prosecution are all over this gun. And the statement by the prosecutor's office that you quoted is just part of the cover-up. But when we get these guys under oath, when we get these guys under cross-examination, you're going to see that story change. We're going to cross-examine the lawyer. We're going to cross-examine the Washington family. We're going to cross-examine Garrison. We're going to cross-examine everybody in that prosecutor's office. And we're going to get the bottom of this. We're going to find out when Garrison knew it, what he knew, and why he covered it up. And when the truth comes out, Mike Tyson's innocence will be revealed. This is not the only argument of perjury in the case. Remember, there were also three witnesses who were prepared to testify that Desiree Washington committed perjury when she denied that she was necking in the limousine with Mike Tyson before she went up to his bedroom and had sex with him. Three witnesses saw her necking in that limousine, and yet the trial court refused to allow those three witnesses to testify. The trial court is not at fault here. The trial court didn't know about this contingency fee agreement, and the Rhode Island court said it should have been presented to the jury, and the jury might very well have come to a different verdict. Alan, why a ruling from Rhode Island for a case that takes place in Indiana, just out of curiosity? Because the lawyer is a Rhode Island lawyer. Remember, Desiree Washington lives in Rhode Island. The first thing she did after she slept with Mike Tyson is she calls up a lawyer and says, how much is this worth? How much can I make on this? Let's get a contingency fee agreement. You take one third, I'll take two thirds. She signs the agreement. Her parents sign the agreement. The dollar bills are practically in her eyes. She comes into court and then she lies to the jury about it. She says, I never thought about bringing a civil suit. I don't have a contingency fee agreement. And the mother said, I have no written agreement at all. Uh, this was perjury designed to cover up a financial motivation. It is the strongest piece of evidence recently emerging in the Tyson case. And I do not believe that Tyson's conviction can be affirmed in but the face of this But to evidence. clarify a moment, Alan, the Rhode Island court really only said the lawyer is incumbent on him to bring that material before the trial judge and then let's have another hearing and find out about it. They are not saying it was perjury. What they are saying is, let's get me all that material and let me decide, and then it's your job to present it properly and ask for a retrial. In the meantime, what happens to Mike Tyson? Does he Mike just Tyson, sit there? We're going to try to get him out of jail at this point. There's no reason why he should be in there. Do you know what the our government argued in this case? That Mike Tyson is a flight risk because he may go and try to fight in some country that doesn't have an extradition treaty with the United States. Where? North Korea? Libya? That's nonsense. Mike isn't going anywhere. He wants to be vindicated. There was perjury in this case. The Rhode Island Supreme Court would not have issued this ruling if they didn't think there was prima facie case of perjury. Otherwise, you don't require a lawyer to disclose lawyer-client privilege communication. And the Rhode Island Court did say, and let me read, we are of the opinion that the existence of the contingency fee agreement should have been made known to the trial court and that its existence might well have had a bearing on the jury's determination. That's very strong language coming from a sister state's 
highest court. And I don't believe that the Indiana courts can ignore that decision, nor will they. I believe this is going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back and will result in the reversal of Mike Tyson's conviction. All right, Alan, what does this mean for Mike Tyson in terms of a timetable? Will he be out, and if so, how long will it take? We're trying to speed this appeal up as quickly as possible. The state is trying to slow it down. The state uh, court reporter has now told us that it's going to take another couple of months to get the transcript. The transcript was supposed to be ready last week. There is no reason why Mike Tyson should languish in prison because of the negligence of the state in not producing the transcript. So we've made an application for an expedited appeal. We're going to be in court Monday of next week in front of Judge Gifford asking her to reconsider the bail application, also to reconsider the new trial motion. And we're hopeful that Mike Tyson may be out relatively soon. I don't want to get anybody's hopes up. Uh, after all, he has been denied bail before, but it's going to be hard to keep him in jail in the face of this overwhelming evidence that the only witness against him committed perjury, at the very least misled the court. The prosecution either knew it or should have known about it. They certainly have a lot of questions to answer in this case, and the burden has now shifted from Mike Tyson to the prosecution to prove what they knew, when they knew it, and why they participated in a cover-up to prevent the truth from being given to the jury. All right, Alan, thank you very much for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you. We also should point out we made several attempts to reach Edward Gerstein, the attorney formerly for Desiree Washington, but our calls went unanswered. Take away from tonight's fight card momentarily for some new news involving the world of boxing. According to an article in the New York Post this past Tuesday, two of the jurors who found former world heavyweight champion Mike Tyson guilty of rape said they now believe Tyson deserves a new trial, saying they no longer believe the testimony of Tyson's accuser, Desiree Washington. The reason? New claims that Washington had discussed book and film deals with lawyers before the trial. Tyson has now served nearly eight months of his six-year sentence at the Indiana Youth Correctional Center. Earlier today, Ferdy and I spoke with Tyson's lawyer, Alan Dershowitz, via satellite from his home in Boston about this latest development. Alan, what are the implications of the jurors who now say, based on the new evidence, they would have acquitted Mike Tyson had this evidence been introduced at trial? Well, the implications are very serious because, remember, the original vote was only six to six. And the six who voted for conviction were able to persuade the others because they said there was no reason for disbelieving Desiree Washington. Now four jurors have come forward and said, if we knew then what we know now, we would have voted to acquit, and Mike Tyson ought to get a new trial. Because Desiree Washington came across at the trial as a shy woman, unmotivated by money, who was just doing the right thing. Now we know that she had megabuck movie and book right deals in her mind. She was planning a civil suit. She had a contingency fee agreement with her lawyer. She lied. Her family lied all about that. None of these financial boondoggles could have come her way unless Mike Tyson was convicted. And the jury didn't know that she had a financial stake in his conviction. And now that they know, four of them are prepared to say he should get a new trial at which that evidence is presented to the jury. How does this new uh, revelation fit in with issues uh, filed in Mike Tyson's appeal? These revelations fit in beautifully to the other issues because, remember, the main issue on the appeal is that the trial judge, handpicked, by the way, by the prosecutor, a former rape prosecutor herself, the trial judge excluded three eyewitnesses who saw with their own eyes Mike Tyson and Desiree Washington necking and petting and engaged in foreplay just moments before they went to his hotel room. In the limousine, they were necking, and yet these three witnesses were excluded, so the jury never found out about that. Therefore, the jury believed her false testimony, that she wasn't necking, that she rebuffed Mike's kiss, and that she was an innocent young virgin. Uh, none of that is true, and had the jury known the truth, they would have had a very different image of Desiree uh, uh, Washington as a money grubbing, as somebody who had planned and calculated very carefully to try to get Mike Tyson's money one way or another. Remember, she said to her friends, as soon as she saw Mike Tyson, he's dumb, he's rich, look what Robin Givens got out of him, I can get the same thing out of him. And that didn't work, and so she decided on another plot to get the money out of him, namely crying rape. All right, let me quote what one juror said in that New York Post article, quote, we the jurors felt that a man raped a woman. In hindsight, it looks like a woman raped a man, unquote. 
Now, this is a very dramatic statement. What does this say about Tyson's accuser? Well, what it says is that the jury has finally seen through uh, what uh, the pretense that she came across with, that she was this uh, innocent young uh, woman, and has finally seen that she is a woman who calculated and contrived with her family to try to get money out of Mike Tyson. And the only way to get that money was to get Mike Tyson convicted of rape. She had a financial motive. The jury was hoodwinked. Now many of the jurors have seen through it. And they are insisting that Mike Tyson get a new trial. And they're right. Well, the bottom line is, do you think the state of Indiana is making an example out of uh, Mike Tyson? Look, the state of Indiana has themselves a trophy. They have the heavyweight, former heavyweight champ of the world, one of the most famous people. They have him locked up. The case isn't even over yet. There's still the appeal to go. Generally, people are let out pending appeal, but they have locked him up, and the prosecution argued in this case that the reason he has to be locked up pending appeal is that otherwise he would escape and go box somewhere else where the United States doesn't have an extradition treaty. Where? Uh, Libya? Uh, North Korea? Iraq, it's nonsense. Uh, they feel they have a trophy, and they don't want him out of jail. They are delaying every way possible. We're trying to expedite this. We want this argued as quickly as possible, because we think that when the court hears the evidence, the facts, the law, they will agree with us that there's been a terrible injustice here. Where do you go from here? What does this mean legally? We want a new trial in front of a different judge, in front of 12 jurors who hear all the evidence, we're not afraid of any evidence coming out. We want them to know everything about Mike, everything about Desiree, everything about our financial motives. We want them to hear the three witnesses who saw them necking in the car. And we're confident that a jury that hears all the evidence, not just evidence selected by the prosecution and by the Washingtons, that jury will acquit in a matter of minutes. Alan, thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much. Intently observing the heavyweight circus from behind bars at the Indiana Youth Center sits Mike Tyson, counting the days, aware that tomorrow is the one-year anniversary of his conviction for rape. As Charlie Sina reports, the approach of Tyson's appellate hearing scheduled for Monday has reignited an old controversy and created a few new ones. I would hope that people learn that um, the justice system treats everybody in the same manner. Uh, that it really doesn't matter whether you're an indigent defendant or whether you're um, extremely wealthy. Indiana was more inclined to tradition and custom rather than justice and fair play. This is the strongest appeal I have ever had. The one with the most compelling arguments uh, for reversal. We had sworn testimony. We had a sequestered jury. We followed all the rules of evidence. We won the case fair and square. And folks that get convicted and go to jail don't like it. I've never had somebody say, gee, you did a great job. Congratulations. I'm off to the penitentiary. Appreciate your help. Since his conviction, the Tyson case continues to make news and create controversy, primarily because of his appeals attorney, Alan Dershowitz, who is no stranger to high-profile cases. Desiree Washington has called my client a rapist. I believe she lied about that. If she lied about that, then she has falsely accused my client of a serious crime. Now is coming out through uh, the trial and error in, 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 in the rumor mill. The fact is being separated from the wheat from the chaff. And we're finding out now that this young lady uh, was having all type of extra correcta peccadillos that she was very uh, for aggressive. Dershowitz, a Harvard law professor, has taken his case very public. Desiree Washington is a perjurer, a liar. If it weren't so vicious, it would just be pathetic. But it's not surprising. Uh, it's vicious because we know, uh, and, uh, and I have to believe that Alan Dershowitz uh, and the defense team know, that the charges they are making are false. My job is to defend my client in the marketplace of ideas and in the court of public opinion. The best thing a good appellate lawyer can do is put that case in front of the appellate court and keep his mouth shut. And that's not what's occurring here. If anything, he's probably alienating the appellate court and, and making it far less likely that they will overturn the conviction. When Dershowitz goes before the three-judge appellate panel, he will ask that Tyson be freed from prison and given a new trial for the following reasons. He will maintain that the trial judge, Patricia Gifford, 
a former rape prosecutor, should never have been allowed to preside over the case. Three defense witnesses who claim to have seen Tyson embracing a woman in his limousine outside the Canterbury Hotel were not permitted to testify. And, says Dershowitz, Judge Gifford failed to properly instruct the jury on the parameters of date rape. This is still an emotionally charged case. In the years since the 12 Tyson jurors rendered their verdict from this jury box, most have steadfastly refused to be interviewed by anybody, some citing fear. One, in fact, changed his telephone number and his address. He could not be contacted for this report. A couple of jurors say they've had second thoughts about the verdict they rendered, but not all of them. I feel the same way as day one. I have never changed my mind. Had we learned that Desiree had signed contracts, or had we learned that uh, she wasn't quite as pure as she was painted there in court, I'd have had a hard time making that decision. It, there would have been enough doubt there in my mind that I'd have, I'd have had to vote not guilty, I think. Tyson's defense team alleges that Washington was hoping to make a financial killing at the expense of Tyson, with the idea of someday selling her story. And while a civil suit is pending against Tyson, her attorney says she is not in the market to sell her story. If she were in it for the money, she would have accepted the bribe that was offered to her well before the trial and avoided all the hassle and harassment of the trial and its aftermath. She didn't do that. While Desiree Washington attempts to get on with her life as a college sophomore, Mike Tyson is jailed 25 miles from Indianapolis. He works in the prison recreation department where among his duties, he serves as the manager of the prison basketball team. He keeps his feelings pretty much to himself. Um, he's accepted his situation, obviously, and, uh, and is doing his best to, to cope with it and, and get through this part of his life. If Dershowitz fails in his attempt to get Tyson a new trial, it is here at the Indiana Youth Center that the former heavyweight champion of the world will serve out the remainder of his sentence. With continued good behavior, Mike Tyson could be released from prison in March of 1995. I'm Charlie Steiner, ESPN, Plainfield, Indiana. There has been a rape. Mr. Mike Tyson has been alleged to have committed the crime. Next Monday, Mike Tyson goes before a judge again to determine the fate of his future. This Friday, Mike Tyson, the movie, lets you decide. No means no. I'm innocent. Only on NBC can you be the judge. Mike Tyson, the movie, NBC Friday. Tonight, see Mike Tyson, the movie. It's absorbing and A-rating, provocative. The Chicago Sun-Times calls it powerful stuff. Mike Tyson, the movie, NBC Tonight. Next, see the movie that's got all of Hollywood talking. It's very, very powerful, very moving. It rings with the best of them. This is really exciting, I think, for network television. Mike Tyson, the movie, is something you should say. Now, wait a minute, two thumbs up. <laughs> Mike Tyson, the movie, NBC Next. Coming up next on Sports Center, Mike Tyson asked for another round in his fight for freedom. Tyson walked down these steps nearly a year ago to the day. He was just handed a jail term. Today, Tyson's lawyers asked for a new trial, but they will have to wait for at least two months for an answer. Arguing that, among other mistakes, the trial judge excluded three witnesses who would have made any jury believe that Desiree Washington was not telling the truth. Mike Tyson's lawyers finally rode into an Indianapolis courtroom this morning for their long-awaited appeal of the ex-champ's rape conviction. ESPN's Charlie Steiner was there. The sense of drama was unmistakable. The attorneys arrived with their own entourage and heavy security. Tyson's appeals attorney, Alan Dershowitz. Oh, never confident. Just uh, hopeful. Representing the state of Indiana, Chief Deputy Attorney General Lawrence Rubin. Also there, Tyson's ever-present promoter, Don King. Three appeals court justices listened and questioned both Dershowitz and Rubin for two hours. Dershowitz claimed that Judge Patricia Gifford, who presided over the Tyson case, made several technical errors, which gave the jury no alternative but to convict Tyson of raping Desiree Washington. Dershowitz made four key points. Judge Gifford excluded three key witnesses for the defense. Gifford's final instructions to the jury were incomplete. The admission of the 911 audio tape was prejudicial against Tyson, and Desiree Washington had financial motives in accusing Tyson of rape. 
Speaking for the state, Rubin contended that Judge Gifford had properly used her legal discretion in making these key rulings, and while some mistakes may have been made, Rubin told the appeals panel, none were so serious as to warrant the overturning of the verdict and granting Tyson a new trial. Reaction following the hearing was concise. The state is pleased with the oral arguments which were just presented to the Court of Appeals, the written briefs filed in the court prior to today's arguments, and the record of the trial court which accompanied those briefs. Along with everyone else, the state now awaits the decision of the Court of Appeals. We were very pleased with the questions that were put and with the obvious familiarity of the judges with the record of the case. And now we're going to go see Mike Tyson and tell him about the argument and hope that justice prevails. Today we have seen due process run its course. I'm very optimistic that Mike Tyson's conviction will be reversed. And this is Indianapolis attorney Mark Shaw serving as our legal analyst on the Tyson story. Four key issues raised by right. Alan Dershowitz in this courtroom. Right. Let's go through them one by one. First, the exclusion of the so-called three mystery witnesses. Well, the justices actually, Charlie, didn't spend as much time on that as I thought they would. Didn't ask as many questions. Alan Dershowitz says that was the worst mistake the trial judge made. Those witnesses should have been allowed to testify. Would have showed Desiree Washington to be a liar. On the other hand, the state says the judge made the right decision. What about the final instructions from Judge Gifford to the jury? Well, Justice Sullivan said that the, the jury needs rules to follow, and that's where we are with this particular issue. That instruction would have said that if Mike Tyson believed that Desiree Washington went, wanted to have sex with him, and the jury would have gone ahead and believed both Washington and Tyson, the jury would have been allowed to acquit Tyson. Now, the state, of course, says rape is rape. That doesn't make any difference. Dershowitz says that the 911 tape should never have been allowed as evidence. Yeah. Uh, his allegation there is that Desiree Washington actually got to testify twice. That shouldn't have happened. The state, on the other hand, says, hey, the judge was correct. The, the uh, jury can look at the weight of the evidence with regard to what she said. And finally, one of the hot issues, certainly on the talk show circuit for Alan Dershowitz, right. was the contingency arrangement between Desiree Washington and her attorney. Well, I think that, uh, that particular issue will go in the dumpster. I don't think there's much to make about it. I don't think the justices are that interested in that particular issue because it doesn't constitute a possibility of really reversible error. I think it might have added to Tyson's case, but I don't think it was a critical issue. Sometime within the next four to six weeks, the three judges will make their decision as to whether or not Mike Tyson will get a new trial. What do you think? I got a sense the justices were interested in the instruction issue and the exclusion of the three witnesses, and in my own opinion, I think Mike Tyson will get a new trial. If Mike Tyson does not get a new trial, he remains at the Indiana Youth Center some 25 miles from Indianapolis in Plainfield through March of 1995. For Mark Shaw, Charlie Steiner, ESPN in Indianapolis, sending it back to Sports Center. After that hearing, Alan Dershowitz did indeed meet with Mike Tyson, as you heard him say he was going to, and after that meeting with Tyson, he described Tyson as, quote, encouraged. Desiree Washington's attorney, Deval Patrick, issued a statement in mid-afternoon, quoting him here, today's arguments only reinforce the obvious. Mike Tyson had a fair trial, and the jury reached the correct verdict in convicting him. There is nothing new here. Still ahead, Steven Spielberg's latest off-screen production and a new twist in the Mike Tyson tale. You could call it a friendly pat on the backside, but she's calling it grounds for a lawsuit. Is it worth a hundred million dollars? To me it is. Some bottom line. They haven't always been in Mike Tyson's corner, but we're beginning to wonder about the low blows he's been... 21 years old by using those hands. Now he could lose it all because of those hands. He reached around to put his um, arm around, hand around my waist, and rather than that, he put it on my rear end at that time, and he squeezed and grabbed and rubbed. Rosie Jones is trying to make a chump out of the champ. And that's the fate, huh? I filed suit against Mike Tyson for $100 million for um, fondling my rear end. It's unbelievable! <laughs> Rosie, Miss Black America, 1990, is suing Ein Mike for a hundred million pieces of silver. A hundred million dollars for smacking you on the derriere. Is it worth a hundred million dollars? To me it is. 
Now, I've had my run-ins with Mike Tyson. We are each other's least favorite people. You, we're off the show. But someone said, I know Mike Tyson's a homosexual. Yeah. But now, everyone is picking on the champ, and I don't like it. Fight fair, guys and dolls. They have serial killers, and obviously they have serial buttocks fondlers. Serial buttocks fondler? Does that mean Mike Tyson is up there with the son of Sam, Silence of the Lambs? I think it would be quite something to know you in private life. J. Morris Anderson, director of the Miss Black America pageant, claims that Mike used his hands on 10 of the 23 contestants. And he is suing too. He feels he's got the right to walk up to, 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 to women at large uh, and put his hand on them. Honk your horn if you haven't sued Mike Tyson. Everyone is doing it. I ain't doing these eggs. You. A touch on the butt may be quite incidental, but millions are a girl's best friend. I hope to win by knockout. Another birthday behind bars for Mike Tyson Wednesday, waiting for the only present he really wants, a new trial. The former champion gave his third interview since entering the Indiana Youth Center 15 months ago, speaking to talk show host Montel Williams. At age 27, Tyson seems to have pushed boxing to the back of his mind while he focuses on trying to clear his name. When I get out of here, you think I'm 28, 29. What can I do? Who can I fight? At me being 28, 29, who can I fight? And I've been fighting all my life. So you think it's over then? It's, yes, it's a possibility. And that's just being um, a, re a reality because th there has to be more than life than just people saying, well, we need you back in the ring. You know what I mean? That's an insult to me. People insult me, but we got to wait till you get back. I got a bit of money. They have no kind of emotional feelings for me as a person. We need you back in the ring. We need you. Uh, I'm looking at this guy. This guy's an ass. The three-panel judge hearing Tyson's appeal seems to be in no hurry. A ruling was due a month ago. Tyson's scheduled release, April 95. Attending the 1991 Miss Black America pageant was already one of Mike Tyson's worst ideas. That's how he met the contestant whom he was convicted of raping, Desiree Washington. That's why he's in prison today. Now comes word that another contestant claims Tyson hit her. Noemi T. McKenzie filed civil suit Wednesday against Tyson seeking unspecified damages and charging that Mike committed battery against her during the pageant. No comment from Tyson's side. The filing comes five days before the expiration of the two-year deadline for making a damage claim. Chris? Coming up next, Mike Tyson loses another legal decision. The rape prosecutor calls it another victory. I think uh, this is a vindication at this level. If Mike Tyson stays in prison, are numbered, the number is pretty big. Good evening, everybody. Alongside Charlie Steiner, I'm Jack Edwards. While Tyson has been behind bars, every talk show in the land has taken up the subject of his appeal, but only the legal opinions of three appeals judges mattered. And nearly six months after hearing his appeal, the three justices came back today with a split decision in a case that's going to remain in the news for a good long time to come. In fact, in Mike Tyson's boxing career, he never lost a split decision. In fact, of his 41 professional fights, only three of them ever went to the judge's scorecards. He won all of those by unanimous decisions. This morning, the imprisoned former heavyweight champion of the world lost a split decision handed down by a three-judge appellate panel in the state of Indiana. They heard two hours of oral arguments almost six months ago. Today, they made their ruling. His rape conviction stands. Tyson's appeal for a new trial was denied by a split decision. Justices V. Sue Shields and Jonathan Robertson voted to uphold the Tyson conviction. But the dissenting justice, Patrick Sullivan, was outspoken in his opinion, writing, quote, my review of the entire record in the case leads me to the inescapable conclusion that he, Tyson, did not receive the requisite fairness, which is essential to our system of criminal justice. Tyson received the news early this morning at the Indiana Youth Center in Plainfield, where he's been for the past 17 months. He received the news from his appeals attorney, Alan Dershowitz. Well, Mike was obviously upset. He was sad. Uh, he wanted to know how quickly we could move to try to get this thing reversed. He didn't understand the decision. I have to tell you, I didn't understand the decision. How do you explain to a man that witnesses were excluded and that 
the prosecutor got to pick the trial judge that the court condemned that process and yet didn't give him a new trial. Remember, all we're asking for is a new trial. Dershowitz told me by telephone that he will file an immediate appeal with the Indiana Supreme Court. Indianapolis attorney Mark Shaw. Justice Sullivan's strong words about fair trial and the speculation by the majority, I think, will have a strong impact uh, at the Supreme Court level. The Supreme Court here will be reviewing this decision, and they're a little bit more uh, left of center than the appellate court. So I think Mike Tyson's still got a shot, but it'll be a while before we find out. The Marion County prosecutor, Jeffrey Modisette, had been angered by the public posturing of Dershowitz throughout the appeal process. And his reaction today to the decision is reflected in his written statement. But Greg Garrison, the attorney that Modis had hired to try the Tyson case last year, typically wasn't quite so diplomatic. Public relations notwithstanding, we still try our cases out here in the flatlands in courtrooms, not on TV. It is the court, the Superior Court of Marion County that is vindicated by the affirmance of the conviction. And I'm, and I'm pleased on behalf of the court for that more than anything else. But you're right, yeah, I'm glad it's over with and I feel better because it came out like it did. Desiree Washington had no comment on the ruling today, but her attorney, Deval Patrick, issued a written reaction. Washington, who has a civil suit pending against Tyson, her case is not expected to be heard until at least the summer of 1994. In the meantime, Mike Tyson remains imprisoned in Plainfield, Indiana. And if his appeal before the Indiana Supreme Court fails, he'll remain there at least until April 1995. Champion Riddick Bowles says it is a dream of his to meet Mike Tyson in the ring. Last night, en route to begin training for his November rematch with Evander Holyfield, Bo met Tyson in prison, where Tyson is serving time on a rape conviction. Bo says it sounds as if boxing is the farthest thing from Tyson's mind. Well, Mike looked excellent, and um, I think he's taking all this in stride, and Mike is doing pretty good. Well, he told me to stay in shape and um, that he's, he's about ready to go to school. Or what. He's going to school, and that um, he hopes to uh, go to college. He's taking this all in stride. Um, I was telling him, I said, Mike, you know, if I was in your particular, I know I would be extremely better. And so he's, doing, he's taking it well. I guess when you're the heavyweight champ, you don't have to stop at security.